Hey, James here. Welcome back to JG3 Reviews. And today I've got for you another fountain pen that I want to share. This you may recognize from a recent uh, pen day video. This is the Delight 2020 pocket pen. It's brass, but it's coated very similarly to the uh, Hongdian Black Forest. So if you liked the color and finish of that pen, you're going to like this pen. It has similar knurling and things like that we'll look at in the design. But this has been a great little pocket pen. And I have it with the uh, Mini Fude nib because I kind of like those on some of my pens. So let's go ahead and spin that camera. I'll tell you what I like and what I don't like and we'll just dive right in. All right, so let's take a look at this Delight 2020 brass pen. And again, I have mine in this very similar to the Black Forest finish, this black finish. So very, very simple design. There is no clip, no roll stop, just the knurling and uh, very simple finial, plain finial at the cap and the bottom. You will notice there are threads here, so this cap does thread onto the end of the pen, making it a much more usable length. This is, uh, by comparison, let me just show you here a quick size comparison, then we'll do more complete later, to their other brass pen. So this is a fairly short pocket pen, not long at all, and I'll put the specs up when we take a closer look at the nib here in just a second. So let's take off that cap. Unscrews easily. I will say I put just the slightest coating of silicone grease when I first got this because it was quite squeaky. Uh, those are fairly sharp threads. It doesn't take much to take it off. I guess we can try to count. A little bit hard to count, uh, but I'm just going to show you. You can count. Very quick uh, to take that cap off, uh, but those were sharp and I guess because of the finish and it being a metal pin, it was just a little squeaky. I put that silicone grease on and the squeak has gone away. It would have done that eventually with wear anyway. But uh, the cap, as I said, does screw on to the end of the barrel and that gives you a very usable length of pin. And then it's very well balanced as well. It's a brass pin so there is, you know, a little bit of heft, but it's not crazy heavy at all. Let me show you without the cap, just so you get an idea. Really quite short, and so if you have uh, larger hands at all, that's that's going to be annoying and, and not that usable, but this makes it perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and look at the inside. Delike, as usual, includes a converter. However, it is not their normal screw-in converter, I assume because of length, and so it is instead just a push plunger converter. You just have to take a little bit extra care. This one works fine. It's nothing to write home about. Uh, and it's, it's a pretty cheap converter, but it is functional. And so far I've had no troubles. As you can see, I have diamine ox blood in it at the moment. If you can use cartridges that fit Delight pins, then it's going to need to be a short cartridge. I'm just going to stick with the converter. Comfortable pen. As you can see, it has this hourglass shaped section, not real long, but comfortable and sufficient. And even though I mentioned those threads are fairly sharp, they don't feel bad. Uh, if you're a high gripper like that, you're going to notice them for sure, uh, but they're not bad. But not bad overall in terms of its ergonomics as long as you have the cap on screwed onto the barrel. Otherwise, for me, it's just a little bit short, but your mileage will vary. Let's take a look at the nib. It is very similar uh, to the one I have on my brass delight pen, except that it does have that black coating, which looks quite good. As you can see, it's nicely decorated. Typical delight mini food nib. You can see the bend there. I do think, let me grab that other pen. It seems to me that this may actually have slightly more. Uh, oh, yes, it does. That was certainly noticeable in the writing. This newer one, it's slightly more bent than my older brass delight nib. So there is a slight difference, and you notice it in the writing. Now you'll notice that these sections are really quite similar. Uh, 
and that's probably why one's as comfortable as the other. I will say that this pin I've had for quite a while, and you can go and look at the review. I'll put a link in here for this. This has been one of the most reliable pins, especially for pocket pins. I've never had an issue. No leaks, No, not a single hard start, no skipping. Uh, just, I can, I can leave it alone for a couple of weeks, come back to it, and it is fine. Just writes on the first letter. Very reliable uh, pen. Really like that one. And uh, rarely does it go two weeks that it gets unused. I carry this in my pocket a lot of the time. Just very, very good. So I come to this pen with some pretty high expectations. And so far, it has held up just as well. And so I'm, I'm glad for that. I just haven't had it as long, so I can't say that long term. But so far, it is uh, living up to its older sibling there. So now let's dive into the writing test and I'll show you what I think about that. This is the Delike 2020 model brass pin and this is their pocket pin. Now it is available in both this finish and in the typical brass finish like the other Delike to my right. This is a Mini Fude and this as you can tell probably if you're familiar with it is the Diamine Oxblood. One thing I like about their nibs, and I was curious if it would be the same with this finish, which again is really well done, is that these pins typically are pretty smooth. So I'm going to be quiet and let you hear. Smooth as always, really nicely done. Now one thing about these pins, uh, what you do with a mini food day or what you can do, uh, I typically write the way I normally write, I just like the line variation, uh, but they're designed for more than that and so you can write from a high angle and you get quite a thin line. You write from a real low down angle And with this one, you get a pretty similar line. It's a little bit thicker. I don't know if you can see it. It's a little thicker and a little bit more saturated. Or you write it at the typical angle, and that's where this one has the most difference. And you can see that that's really quite different. And let me do, I usually don't, but I will for this one. Uh, you can do reverse writing, and then you get a very thin uh, more than, an, I'm going to call that extra, extra fine plus uh, line. So, and I don't know how long, it's not made to do that really well. It's not polished or anything that way on, on that side. So I don't know how much writing you could do like that, but if you needed to do a thin line real quick, you certainly can. And as you can see, there was no skipping with that either. I actually did quite well. Okay, so writes really quite well, and I really do uh, like this nib. I have had zero issues. I'm just going to do, see that? It just keeps up really well, and so I, I'm i very pleased. Uh, it writes very similarly to this other pen, and in fact. Okay, so let's look at some pros and cons. Pros. Um, the size I really like the size of this pen. Not only can you fit this in your pocket, uh, in some pairs of jeans you can get it in that fifth pocket. It's just a really good EDC, great for EDC uh, carry, uh, and I like that about it. The nib, 
I like both the variation and it is quite smooth. I really should be trying to write well, but honestly, I didn't try. So, <laughs> that's just, that's, this is the handwriting my wife sees most of the time. Uh, this is, uh, you know, I said that it's hard to write with when it's small and doesn't have that on there, but without thinking, I just grabbed the pen and started writing, so apparently, uh, I can at least write somewhat legibly uh, with that off of there. What else would be a positive? I think it's going to be, based on my experience with the other, both quite durable and reliable. I'm going to go ahead and make that prediction. It's been my experience so far, and I think it will be long term. I've really been impressed with that other uh, pen, and they're very much different style, but very, very similar overall. Cons, what would I have? Well, on the negative side, and let's, let me just put this here so you know what's what, uh, I would say the converter. Uh, I'm always a positive that it has one, but... Uh, that shortened converter obviously was necessary, but you know the problem with a lot of those is that they are those slide converters, and uh, I'm just not much of a fan of slide converters. They uh, require more attention. That's not necessarily a bad thing, okay? That's just the reality. Uh, but they require more attention, and it is easy, even when you're paying really good attention, to just give a little bit too much force to that and splurt ink out of the pen. I haven't done it, but I've come close. It's, it's pretty easy uh, to let happen. What else? Even though it's a small pocket pen, you know, it's, it's, it's a brass pen, so it's got a little bit of weight, but I don't think I would call that a negative. That's just the material that's used. I do wonder, uh, and I'm going to put a question mark here because I don't know. Uh, while I, the pen is definitely durable, uh, the finish durability. Because it's a pocket pen, you know, I'm going to want to throw this in my pocket with stuff, and I haven't because I'm not real sure about that finish. How long will it be durable? I don't know, but I can tell you this. Looking at it under this bright light, I can see that at the edge, right here at the edge, don't know if you can see that or not, there is just a little bit of what looks like brass peeking through. So that may give me some indication it's going to wear off. Now that, I'm putting it as a question, I'm putting it as a con, but I don't necessarily mean that as a don't get it because. Uh, that also is potential for patina, which some people like and some people don't like. I'm not going to mind it. Uh, but if you are someone who does not want that finish wearing off and you don't want patina, you want this to be uh, the same always, there I would have to put a question mark. I don't know, I don't know that that's going to happen. Uh, people have the same questions about these nibs. Mine have worn well, and I'm not seeing a lot of wear off on, uh, on this one, but it doesn't have enough time, but on the Hong Dian. And I don't know how similar... I mean, these could come down the same factory line or not. I have no idea. Uh, might not even be the same finish. But I've had good luck with the Hong Dian. Um, so that's a, that's a question. Let me think. Any other cons? Uh, not really. I think the price is pretty reasonable. If you compare it to something like a Caveco Sport, it's really quite good uh, price-wise. But I think it's, good, it's great for what you're getting. Yeah, I, I think that's probably my full list. Those would be my two uh, knocks against it. Maybe maybe just one extra thing. I think for some people, there is a bit of a sharp edge. Doesn't bother me, but it might bother you. Uh, because part of it's going to be, how does it fit your hand? Uh, this is not bothering me. But some people, this the edge of this cap right here, is sharp enough that it if it if it's rubbing right there it's going to drive you nuts so just be kind of that's a that's really going to depend on the person that's that's going to be hard to say for certain but there you go overall really do like this pin good experience so far love the size i mean if you if you think that this one is handy then the delight 2020 really is is a handy 
pin and probably looks pretty good in that brass finish, but uh, I didn't spend money on two pins. Let me give you a size comparison. So you know there's that. Uh, to a full size pin I have handy would be the Lamy Safari. And that, now you know why that is. Let me arrange these where they won't be off camera. Uh, why that's a pocket pin, right? Uh, maybe if you weren't familiar with this, but you are with this, you start to get the idea of just how small that is. Other pocket pens that you may or may not have experience with, there is the Caveco Sport. And very, very similar in size. Uh, wow, really, really close in size, actually. So that gives you a good idea if you've got a Caveco Sport, but it's going to be smaller in diameter and uh, a good bit more durable. And then there is uh, the Tasha. What's that called? Oto. The Oto Tasha pocket pin. I guess Tasha and pocket are a little bit redundant, but hey. Uh, then there is, I, I reviewed this not that long ago, the Fullowin pocket pin, and it's a good deal smaller than it as well. That gives you an idea. Uh, if you're looking for a certain size, well, there's a pretty good roundup of some great pocket pins. I've, I've enjoyed all of these, a uh, couple more than others. This one goes with me more often than any other because I don't want to scratch that one. Uh, I don't like putting this one in my uh, pants pocket with my keys, so it, it stays in a shirt pocket. And uh, that one I've been keeping in a desk, so that tells you something, right? And uh, I think this one's going to be the same way. Really, really handy little pin. All right. Well, thank you. God bless you. Like, subscribe, share the video with someone you think might like a new pocket pen, or you might, you think maybe that'll introduce them to the fountain pen world. I hope that you have a great week, and I'll see you in the next review.